the new zone lead that came out of Rehab at patch 1.3. I think he's a very easy 5 out of 5 star must pull character for everyone. Hey, welcome back. Let's talk about Zhongli and the buff he got and let's see how good he is now. And we're gonna start right away with the biggest change that I think affected Zhongli the most. And that is that his J shield now also take away 20% of the elemental resistance and physical resistance of the enemy. Now, in case you didn't know, resistance is actually a separate multiplier when it comes down to damage at here. And it can calculate it using it this way. However, to make it easier to understand, I decided to compare the damage that Zhongli is providing us uh, with our best friend, Bennett. And to answer that question, I decided to plot some really ugly graph using my Python program. And as you can see, moving on the x-axis, this is how much attack we're getting from Bennett. So at the left is 0 and at the right mean that Bennett is giving us 1000 attack exactly. And for this particular case, you can see the breakpoint is around 250. Meaning that Zhongli buff is equivalent to getting 250 attack from Bennett buff. But do keep in mind that ultimately it will depend on your gear and it might vary from person to person. For example, a Dilute with Wolf Greystone might look like this, where the buff from Zhongli resistance threat is actually equivalent to 400 attack from Bennett. Although for a average player, your graph may look something like this instead, meaning that uh, Zhongli is approximately providing the same damage as a 300 attack Bennett buff. Now, of course, how much Bennett attack you're getting also depends on your Bennett as well. For me, my Bennett is level 76, and I have 613 base attack uh, with my level 80 fasting desire, which is from the previous event. Uh, on top of that, my talent is at level 11 because I have Constellation 5, uh, which gives me free free level. And additionally, Constellation 1 also gives me 20% uh, percent extra. So in total, I'm getting about 730 attack when I use my Bennett ult. And so getting equivalent value about like 300 attack is like getting half of Bennett worth of damage on my Zhongli. And depending on your Bennett, your value might be different. But uh, unless you have like a 5 star weapon, a level 90 weapon or a level 90 Bennett, I think your Bennett probably looks something like mine. Uh, maybe not even mine because I have level talent 11 after all. And getting half a Bennett worth of damage is nothing to be underestimated since Zhongli main primary function is still going to be providing your team with tanky, shield, or maybe CC from his meteor. And of course, Bennett ults have cooldown, have downtime, have energy, or sometimes the enemy just forces you out of the circle, as you can see here, where his attack pattern forces just pushing me out. Or maybe you're playing a character that just cannot stay in Bennett's elemental burst circle. Xiao, for example, is one. Whereas Zhongli, you just have to process Yi, and you get a nice shield on top of it as well. Ultimately, it comes down to the problem of usability. While Bennett is really really amazing, Zhongli is just easier to use because you don't have to worry about as much. In fact, the reason why resistance threat was never really talked about was because of usability. For example, a lot of the resistance threat are hidden behind constellation. Fenty C2, 12% enemy threat. Fenty C6, 20% enemy threat. Uh, Gene C4 is another 40% enemy threat. Currently, the most reliable way to do resistance shred is to use the force that VB artifact set bonus. But there's two major flaws with this. The first one is that you cannot decrease enamel or geo resistance this way because you cannot swirl them. The second reason is of course that it is actually hard to practically apply in combat consistently, and if you do, it often comes in the cost of breaking your rotation. By the time that you switch back to your main DPS, your 10 second BB shred has already been 5 seconds already, so you lose half the value. Now, aside from Zhongli having Geo Resistant Shred, the new Geo Resonant also have a 20% Geo Resistant Shred, on top of the original bonus which is giving you 15% damage dealt when you have a shield, meaning that putting a Zhongli to get the double Geo Resonance is actually going to be better than putting a Bennett to get the attack buff. Or you can just put both of them in for Omega Big Damage. 
or perhaps now you can put your Zhongli in your Geo first team and then put your Bandit in your second Pyro team, evenly distributing the power. With those in mind, it is very easy to say that Zhongli is at least as good as Bandit now. He is able to provide more defensive capability than Bennett using his big shield to absorb damage and absorb CC. Furthermore, he can provide his own CC using his meteor even against large enemy. And finally, he is still able to provide a significant damage increase to your party. And since that Bennett is a top tier amazing character, by correlation, we can also say Zhongli is now a really top tier amazing character. But the buff didn't just stop there. The second buff that they gave to Zhongli is that now his shield have 150% damage absorption against all elements as well as physical damage. Effectively, this means that your shield is 1.5 times bigger. This makes it very easy to build for a big shield. For example, right now my Zhongli have about 23k HP which is coming from level 70 and then a level 18 flowers and some other random artifact, for example level 8. HP helmet and then level 0, level 0, and then the feathers. At this point, I'm probably getting about a 10k shield, which is very, very good because that's like half my Deluke HP. So, effectively, I am increasing the survivability on my Deluke by 1.5 times. If you don't take too much damage, you can easily just replace your healer with Zhongli. Now, you could always do this before, but the new buff just make it a lot, a lot easier. Even my low, very low investment Zhongli can do it. And the final buff to Zhongli is of course now all of its attacks scale with maximum HP. Now this is actually a significant amount of damage because the damage uh, scaling can be calculated this way from previous experiment with the Meteor. And well again to understand how much value we're getting, we can just solve it using very simple math. At level 6, my tablet have a resonant damage of 44.8%. So how does the 1.9% max HP compare to this? Well, let's take a look. And of course, to understand that question, once again, we rely on plotting some graph. Uh, the way to read this graph is pretty simple. The x-axis is HP, and the y-axis is how much equivalent attack we can get. So for example, at this point, which is 20k HP, uh, our stone resonance will do additional damage as if we have like 800 more attack ish. 800 attack is a lot, and as we go on, you can see at 30k HP, that's equi uh, equivalent to about 1200 attack, and this value keeps going up and up and up. Without going too detailed into the math, basically, if you're building him DPS before, now your new Zhongli do about like 1.5 times more damage than before. And if you're building him support or maybe a full HP build, you do 2 or 3 times more damage now. Especially if you were utilizing his animation cancel, which is after he kicked his pole arm, you immediately dash cancel out and attack again. Well, we talked a lot, but finally let me teach you how you build Zhongli as well. There's currently three ways you can go about Zhongli. You can go full HP, big shield build. You can do a hybrid like medium shield HP as well as good damage build. Or you can just straight up go full DPS Zhongli. Either one of those is fine. The easiest one is of course just going full HP build. You can run Black Tassel as your pole arm because it gives you HP. Unfortunately, I don't have one that I leveled up though. Uh, for your artifact, you can run for Petra, however, I strongly recommend against it because it is really annoying to practice passive. For those who don't know, you have to pick up the crystal as Jolie to get the reaction, and then you start getting into this usability issue similar with 4VV set, and that is you have to apply the element, switch to Jolie, crystallize the element, pick up the crystal, and then switch back to your main DPS. So for me, I would much rather switch to 2 uh, Petra and 2 Nobulus, which if I can just find random here. So a 2 Petra, 2 Nobulus is what I would have uh, recommend instead, since it allow you to do big meter damage. And of course for all your main stat, you just look for HP percent, very simple. Now the hybrid build, which I think is what I would recommend to most people, go back to using a regular uh, lens, such as the Phonius lens, the Black Cliff lens, or the Deathmatch lens, or maybe even the 5 star lens if you want to put that on your support jungle. 
And once again for the artifact, we will be using two Noblest and two Petra. But the biggest difference is that you would actually go back to using crit main stat on your helmet, but you would use HP substat on your hourglass. The primary reason is because HP and attack percentile are kind of conflicted with each other, but since you want to make your shield as big as possible, you would prefer using HP instead of attack percent. And so basically, you just replace all your attack percent with HP percent instead if possible. The final build is of course the physical DPS Zhongli build or just DPS Zhongli. Uh, interestingly enough, there's actually a different way to build this. So if you're running a Crescent Pike, then your artifact should actually be 2 gladiator and 2 blasting with a physical damage goblet. But if you're running a 5 star weapon instead, you will actually be running 4 piece gladiator if possible. The math actually turned out that doing it this way is better. Uh, however, you will still be running a physical damage goblet. As a final thought, I think Zhongli is very good now, very universal, very very easy to fit him into any A team. Back in the day, let's say you're running a perma-free Ganyu team, where you have Ganyu, Xingxiu, Diona, and you wasn't sure who to put as your last member, well, you would say, huh, let's just bring Venti, because Venti is so strong. Huh, let's just bring Bennett, because you get so much attack buff. Now you have another option, you can say, let's just bring Zhongli, because he's so rounded, he gives you damage, he gives you survivability. Aside from functioning as a very universal strong support that you can put in everywhere, he also functions as a really really strong physical DPS. If you're a new player or if Zhongli banner ever come back, I would say Zhongli is a must pull because he's just so good in every category. You can build him DPS, you can build him support. I would very easily say that now he's a 5 or 5 star character, a must pull for every single player. Now a lot of you might be wondering if he's stronger than Ventina or maybe he's equivalent. Unfortunately, I would say that not quite but very very close. Venti existence is a leak above everyone else because he has a irreplaceable functionality, namely that he can infuse elemental into his tornado and that function is irreplaceable by anyone else. But Zhongli surely is getting there. Well, that's it for this video, and hopefully by the next time I see you guys, Ichi will get buffed in. Yeah. <laughs>